Okay, reading regression tables. Uh, we're gonna learn to do this by reading one of the tables from a paper we wrote in the lab called Productive Pacifists. And, you know, so this is a table that presents analysis where we're trying to test whether the structure of a country's economy, and particularly whether it's oriented to uh, earn income from land through like agriculture and oil, uh, oil drilling and things like that, mining, or whether it's the economy is structured to produce income from, uh, from production, from manufacturing, from services, from things like this. So sort of this, are, is the economy land oriented or not? And we have this measured two different ways, right? So and one of the things we keep talking about is there are many different ways to measure uh, most social science concepts. So in this table, um, some of the models, some of the regression models, there's four regression models in this table, models one, two, three, four. So four different regressions have been run, and this is a table of the results of all four of them. In two of those models, in models one and three, uh, we just have this binary measure of land orientation. One if it's land oriented, zero otherwise. So there's some sort of cutoff here. We say all these are one category, all these are the other. So that's one way to, to measure our independent variable of interest or our causal construct, right? Um, and the other way is to think about this as a continuous measure. You could either be extremely land oriented, or you could be kind of somewhere in the middle, or you could be extremely production oriented. So we construct a continuous measure um, that has a lot of different values it can take on. In the same way that we can measure our independent variable of interest a whole bunch of different ways, um, we can measure our outcome of interest a whole bunch of different ways. And in this analysis, we're trying to see whether these uh, states that are more land oriented are more likely to engage in certain types of sort of profit motivated conquest. Okay, well, how do we measure sort of profit motivated conquest? How, what does that look like? Um, well, two of the different ways that that can look is uh, a state could make a resource based territorial claim, which is to say they could make a claim on territory that currently is controlled by another state um, and that that would be and, and make this claim on resource rich territory. So they can make this territorial claim based on the resources that are under that ground. They can be claiming territory. Okay, so making that claim is one step. Um, they could also initiate a militarized interstate dispute or a mid based on that claim, right? They could actually uh, mobilize the troops and, and try in some way to, to seize that territory, right? So those are two different ways to, to measure our outcome of interest, right? So that gives us, in this table, four different models, right? Two different measures of the independent variable of interest, two different measures of the dependent variable. Uh, in this case, you know, everything else in the about the models is held constant, right? We estimate the model the same way, um, and we include the exact same control variables, right? Um, okay. So what gets presented in this table? So we, that, those are the four regressions we're running. How do we present that? So if you start to look up here in model one, um, look at our independent variable of interest, and you see this first number. This is the coefficient of interest. And this says uh, if we increase, so in a, at least so in a, um, uh, you know, so if this were a standard least square, ordinary least squares regression, um, it gets pretty easy to interpret these coefficients. You would say that a one unit increase in the independent variable is associated with what increase or decrease in the dependent variable, how many unit increase or decrease in the dependent variable. In a, uh, a logit regression, which these are, uh, the, the interpretation is a little more complicated, but it's still, this is the, the size of the effect that we estimate of x on y, right? So this is the estimated size of the effect. And then this number in parentheses, this is what we call the standard error. Um, and without getting kind of into the math, this is a measure of uncertainty, right? And so this helps us know how precise is this estimate. So this is the effect that we estimate, and this is our measure of uncertainty around that estimate. Um, now, for hypothesis testing, we're often interested in, you know, is this result statistically significant, right? What's the probability that if the null hypothesis were true, if it's actually the case that land orientation has no effect on whether or not states make resource-based territorial claims, then what's the probability that just due to random noise, we would end up estimating uh, an effect that's this strong? Um, and so using the size of the effect and our measure of uncertainty, we can combine those numbers, do a little math, and get to uh, what we call p-value, or the probability that if the null hypothesis were true, we would see something, we would estimate an effect at least this strong. 
And so here we, we denote kind of some information about the p-values using the stars. You'll note that the, the, we're about to make these tables in R and you'll see that the, the package we use to make these tables is called stargazer, um, looking at the stars in the regression tables. And down here in the key of this table, we see that one star signifies a p-value that's less than 0.1 two stars, p-values less than 0.05. So that's less than a 5% chance that if the null hypothesis were true, we would estimate an effect at least this strong. And then three stars is p less than 0.01. So in this, this two star level, that's the, that's the conventional threshold for statistical significance in, in social science. Um, so we see that across actually all four of our different models, we have sort of a uh, pretty high level of statistical significance. There's less than a 1% chance uh, that if the null hypothesis were true, we would estimate um, an effect at least this strong, kind of assuming, and this is a strong assumption, that everything else is specified correctly in these regressions. Okay, so that's sort of what's going on with a coefficient and a standard error and a set of stars. Um, sometimes, you know, this key is important because sometimes people will say, oh, well, let's give a little tau for 0.1 and one star for 0.05 and two stars for 0.01 and three stars for 0.001, right? So they might use kind of different uh, different threshold, you know, the, the symbols to thresholds uh, may map slightly differently from, from table to table, so you always want to look down here. It's also the case that here the note just says st significance levels. When you're making tables, you can have much longer notes. Sometimes they might say these are logit regressions, we specify the standard error this particular way. So they can, the, this note down at the bottom of the table may be used to provide the reader with more information about exactly what's going on in the regressions that are being summarized. Okay. So we don't just estimate the coefficient for the independent variable of interest, we also estimate it for all the control variables that are also in the model, right? So our measure of regime type, our measure of uh, how many people are in the military, how much uh, the military is spending every year. So all these different, well, all, all these different independent variables also have their own coefficient estimate, their own standard error, and we go ahead and put stars to tell you uh, their level of statistical significance as well. We get down here, um, we also always present the estimate of the constant term, right? So, uh, so in our regression equation, we've got like y equals alpha plus beta one times x, uh, one plus beta two times x two, so on and so forth, plus some error term. Okay, so this is the alpha and this is the standard error on that alpha. And we don't, in substantive terms, really interpret that much, but that's what's, but we do report it. Um, and a really important thing we, re we report is the number of observations. So one of the things that's going on when you um, put a bunch of different independent variables into a regression model is that if, if any of those variables has a missing value for that observation, that observation gets kicked out of the analysis. And so what you'll see is that in either of the models where we, so for most of the, many of these variables, they're in all of the regressions. So if there's any observation where we're missing data on military personnel, that observation's gone from all three, or sorry, from all four models. Um, but we do get differences in models between those that include the binary measure of land orientation. Those models have 11,393 observations, models one and three. Uh, and if we use this continuous measure, uh, then we only have 10,341 observations. So there's a little over 100 observations, actually about 150 observations, uh, I'm sorry, about 1,050 observations uh, for which we can uh, get a binary measure, but we don't actually have a continuous measure. Um, there's about 1,000 observations that we end up kicking out from this continuous model because we don't have enough information to really parse exactly where it is on that continuum. Our, our continuous measure doesn't make a ton of sense uh, for those observations. Some of those are really extreme values that are kind of weird and we kick them out. Um, but, but so this, this number of observations and kind of how the number of observations varies across models is something you often want to pay attention to when you're reading regression models. So uh, that's the information on regression table. And now we'll move on to actually making our own regression tables.